Michael Okorach, Michael Okorach, Joseph Oyed, and Timothy Kisiga. With their replacements, Nathan Bwambale, Ivan Kabagambe, Saul Chivumbi, Robert Aziku, Frank Kidega, Nicholas Kato, Alhaji Manano, and Liam Walker. ...against the Ugandans, but the home side will have history of their own to write. And we are underway, game live, with Ivan Magomo. We are officially underway. Bryson Adaka already into the thick of the action and Barry Young will be looking for John Kubu here. John Kubu, one of Kenya's more dangerous players in their game over against Zambia over the weekend. Now Ivan Magomu, he's here already getting the crowd on his feet at Kings Park Arena with some silky footwork to set up Conrad Wanyama for a box kick that will try to see how good Brian Wahinya is on such... That Kenyan scrum half, very, very agile on the ball. Here they come again. It's a pick and go from the scrum half. He's fancying a little bite of the action himself. Kenya, just looking for entry into the Ugandan five now. Playing comfortably in their 22. And the Ugandan defense looks like it's everywhere. And of course, meets Ochen. You will not believe it, but those are similar names from different countries. Ochen for Uganda and Okoth for Kenya. The tackles are very nail-biting. Ugandan defending with their lives. And now Teddy Akala for Kenya meets yet another determined tackle from Jacob Ochen, doing the most, the winger. John Kubu out to Brian Wahinya. This is dangerous. Brian Wahinya finds Polo Rege, who is hugged ferociously over there by Michael Wokorach, the 53 cup man. And the Kenyans are still moving the phases. This is looking like malaria time for Uganda. And Barry Young tries to sneak in over there. Does he? He's just stopped short. The Ugandans will need to go to their knees for this kind of defensive work. The referee is watching like a satellite over the action. And it's try time for the Kenyans. They draw the first blood in this action. And the congratulations look like they're going the way of should be Polo Rege, the winger. He's celebrating with his teammates. They are shaking his hand. They are saying, well done. First try of the game and the Kenyans are leading 5-0 with a conversion to come. It is actually Bryson Adaka. He was on fire against Zambia. And defense, and then again, the patient build up by the forwards. And Uganda will have to do a lot better in order to prevent Kenya gaining that ground and will have to protect their ball better as well. And uh, Johnny Kubu has the conversion to take. He had excellent attempts on Wednesday against Zambia. And this would probably be a straightforward kick for him. You can see that Kenya is probably um, thinking of playing a very physical game and deploying more of their forwards, while Uganda with the 5-3 split is probably thinking of running the, the ball more. And so have more backs on, on the bench. Kenya again in motion. Brian Wahinya into Johnny Kubu. He's been very dangerous all tournament. He finds Joel Nzuga. Joel Nzuga try time again. That did not even take a long time. They had barely finished celebrating their first try. And Joel Nzuga from John Kubu on the assist. Happens yet again in a space of four days. And the Kenyans are into the double figures with two tries and another conversion to come. And the Ugandans are looking Hey, where they are looking blue black, just like their shirts, looking for the response, but the Kenyans are cruising it away. Yeah, the, that overload, that is happening. And um, the, in the first try, first, Kenya was able to get gain ground, and then the forwards had a patient build up, while in this case it was just the back line through and through. And that has doubled Kenya's lead to 10 0 with Johnny Kubu yet to add the extras. And this time he is sure and he has nailed the two points. So Kenya currently lead by 12 points to zero. As Uganda is to, to, if Uganda is to get back into this game, they need to score points within the next five minutes. Otherwise, Kenya is there is a possibility of Kenya running away with this game and with the Victoria Cup title.
and making it very difficult for Uganda also to win the, the Elgon Cup title. Yeah, tactically speaking, Uganda is struggling to cope with Kenya having two distributing players there in uh, Brian Wahinya, the number 10, and, and Johnny Kubu. But now it is Byron Oketayot in position for the Ugandans, and they've somehow found themselves on the, lucky, on the fair side of luck with the ball in good Kenyan territory, and on top of that, the Kenyans gift away possession for one of the, the trades he carries in his pocket. Here they are again. It is Okoth Walter. Just gave away a penalty recently and he's given another one, the debutant. And Ivan Magomu is quick to start it. The referee just saw him and said, Mr. Pincher, not under my watch. Please come back and do this right at the mark that I have awarded. Yeah, this uh, kick is well within Ivan Magomu's range, and uh, Uganda has opted to go for the, the three points. Um, incidentally, Ivan Magomu was the top uh, goal kicker in the Nile Special um, Premier League uh, this season. He had uh, 129 points with, um, um, off his boots, with 42 of them being conversions and 15 of them being penalties. And he was also the highest, highest point scorer with 149 points. So, in addition to the points of his boots, he also had uh, four tries. The ancestral winds of Kings Park seem like they are blowing against him. But this is a man that's home. This is a man doing a very comfortable job and he slots that one right down the middle. Ivan Magomo from downtown. Ivan Magomo will be very appreciative and you believe he will be slicing them all the way home. The Rugby Queens, two, the Kenya Simbas. Where runners up were Kenya, and then Uganda were third with Zambia taking up last position. Of course, shout out to our friends in Tanzania who are watching this game. The Victoria Cup can't wait to see you feel the game. Uganda now playing on the advantage. Ivan Magomu, what is that chipped kick? Does he find good touch with it? No, he doesn't, but we are back for a penalty, and you believe Ivan will have another attempt for goal on this one. Yeah, Kenya were found guilty of collapsing that scrum. And so, um, again, this is well within Ivan Magomo's range. And uh, he has called four pulls, and he's going to take the kick. And we'll look to cut the deficit to six points if he is successful. When you look at the makeup of the teams, um, the Uganda team is dominated by um, the Black Pirates and they are the 2003 league champions with the uh, Cops as the runners-up. And um, um, the, there are actually nine Pirates players in this squad with six of them on the starting lineup. While in the Kenya team, you have the team dominated by Cabras with 10 players in the starting lineup for Cabras and an overall 13 players from Cabras, and they are the, the Kenya Cup winners. And the kick is good. Ivan Magomu's boots are sure to. Points for Team Uganda. It is now 6 to Uganda. Ivan Magomu. There is fire in that foot. Two attempts at goal, two converted. It's Wanyama catches the Kenyans napping, attempts a very tricky kick, and Byron with a big tackle on John Nyambua. That looked like it was a very clear knock-on, but the response kick from the Kenyans, holy moly, what a deadly 50-22 that was. And while the Ugandans seemed like they had a genuine call for a scrum down in the Great Kenyan 22, the referee whips play on. And Julian yeah, Zuga finds such a deadly 50-22 for the Kenyans. But at the end, justice has been served. Yes, that man, Jason Misoga, had a knock-on after a mid-rip tackle by Byron Oketayot. And the Ugandans will be back now to construct from the Kenyan half. And Byron is there. He's, he's the man of the moment. You can see him cheering his boys on. Come on, come on, let's get working. This is possible. Remember, it's a six-point game. And if Uganda manages, just manages to see the white wash off this play, they could just find themselves in the lead. Consultation between the referee and his AR. The referee was tipped off by the AR that it was at Uganda won a penalty.
because Kenya was collapsing them all. If they win a, another penalty from, from this position, they'll have options of either going for the line out or um, trusting Magomu's boot to add another three points. Kenya being very suspect at the breakdown, but now it's Uganda in position. Conrad Wanyama, slow watch for running. Ivan Magomu in Timothy Chisiga, dangerous man Timothy Chisiga. Into Joseph Oyet, but Bryson Adaka, what wonderful tracking back. He followed that ball in motion until he managed to collect Joseph Oyet. And now Conrad Wanyama in the... He goes in for contact, and the referee's hand is up. Obscuru had to literally uh, tilt to the side of the Kenyan line down to claim that ball. But the referee's watchful eye finds Faraj Yodugo at fault. And the Kenyans now have a scrum of their own. Barry Young feeds it in and the ball is out. Conrad Wanyama is watching him very keenly. That is very well done by the Ugandans. Terrific defending and the turnover is juicy. Oh, wow. Very hard work. But all the credit goes to Conrad Wanyama there. He just saw that ball. He realized that the back foot of Jansson Misoga did not collect it as the Kenyans had wanted and it was rolling out for Barry Young to collect. Conrad Wanyama just runs out there, hits out at Barry Young and he sets it up for a turnover which is very well completed. And Ivan Magomu, Mercurio Ivan Magomu, yet again on the tee to seek a three-pointer for the Ugandans and bring this game, would you believe it? 12 minutes apart, just about 10 minutes ago. And there's a possibility that it will be only three points apart in the next few seconds after this decisive kick by the Ugandan captain. Yeah, the Kenyans had, the entire Kenya backline had lined up on the left of the pitch in a, in a quite unconventional um, formation. But Conor Nyama did very well to disrupt the ball for Barry Young. And then he had Jacob Kenyan, Byron Oketoyot, very fast, very fast on him. And pressure by the Ugandans. That's clumsy. The Ugandans are in possession now. Eric Muller comes back into traffic. Tries to find Asuman Mugerwa. Doesn't Ivan Magomu. He was a footballer before. What chaos. <laughs> but uh, the good thing is it's still Uganda's ball and they have a scrum on the five. Now Uganda with a second bite at the cherry. Conrad Wanyama feeds this in. They're trying to make it move. It doesn't move but Conrad finds Tim Chisiga. is a deadly man Tim Chisiga. But he finds very alert defenders. And that run is curtailed barely a few meters in. Uganda keep moving it. Now it's turn for the Kenyans to put the shoulders at work. Conrad Wanyama searching in there. Looking for the ball. He has Elifa Zimong in wait. He skips it. Finds Ivan Magomu. Joseph Foyet. His feet kiss the touch. And that chance goes begging. The Ugandans from a scrum down at the five end up gifting the Kenyans with a line out at the five. We shall wait. ...away from there with, with five points. Um, Kenya hasn't wasted their opportunities when they've been in the 22. And Uganda once again has the ball and uh, with, the with Wanyama in Magomu uh, takes over scrum half duties. Surely this now. time we'll wait and see. Asuman Mugerwa. Three or four Kenyans attacking him in defense. Asuman sets up phase now. It comes out to Byron, into Ivan. Ivan goes for a ship kick for Timothy Chisiga. Up against Johnny Kubu. Timothy looks like he's knocked that one forward. As a matter of fact, he has, and it's John Kubu who gets the advantage. And the referee duly calls it. The Kenyans survive yet again. The, the onslaught by the Ugandans. Is relentless, they are constantly coming, and Johnny Kubu is probably feeling that the contest between him and Timothy Chisiga did not edge him well. He's uh, a bit of a frustrated man there with his body language, but luckily for him and his fellow men in red, they are going to be working this out from the scrum down. Hopefully, it won't be another scrum penalty this time, and they can get away from this dangerous territory where the Ugandans have cornered them from. Give them credit. They have kept out Uganda, and Uganda only has six points to show for all their efforts. Airtight defending from the men of the 254. And now here they are again with Walter Okoth. Looks like he's turned over yet again. And the celebrations are big. Jacob Ochen, he's a flanker for his rugby club, the Ginger Hippos. 
but here he's being deployed at the wing and is coming in to give some of that physicality. Now, Conrad Wanyama has caught the Kenyans at a lunchtime nap yet again. They did not see him coming, no one did. And it's try time for the home side. Conrad Mwalimu Wanyama, the artful dodger, the sharp thinker, the quick footed man, the first man to run with arms akimbo, has just given Uganda very high hopes and a chance to go in first time in the game. Yeah, Conrad Wanyama, the man of the moment. It was his textbook tackle around the ankles. He literally tied Walter Okot's shoelaces together. And I mean, you can't run without your legs. And the big man went down and Jacob Ochen was very fast on him to try and steal that ball. And the referee gave a penalty for holding on. Now the Kenyans assumed that Uganda would either call for a scrum down or a line out. And they had made a huddle. And quick as you please, Conrad Ranyama scratched that ball and scampered to the, the try line and dotted down. Yes, that watertight defense of the Kenyans has finally been breached. And now Joseph Oyet is already bringing the, the Ugandans back in action. Today is no wedding day. It is not a day to tell tales. This is action. Ivan Magomu. Now on to his opposite number, Brian Wahinya, good distributor of the ball into the hands of Barry Young, into another distributor in Johnny Kubu, who goes for the kick. Ivan could let this one die. Ivan finds it a tricky bounce. He skips it and Brian Wahinya is the man that is going to start us off in this action. And you can really notice that the Kenyans have gone very quickly to their bench. Uh, that man, Walter Okoth, who was debuting at number 12, has moved off the pitch and made way for Paul Mutsami. Paul Mutsami was one of the standout debutants in the game of Kenya against Zimbabwe. Today he started on the bench and he has joined the fray. Uh, there's been also a couple of other substitutions which we are going to know in due course after the Kenyans have made their intentions clear off this play. They are now recycling and Brian Wahinya has stepped in at scrum half. It is also noticeable that Barry Young looks like he has and made work. And the first penalty the way goes the way the of the men in the red. Yeah. And be on the back foot. Now Kenya, they are looking for a try. They really need one. It is Uganda's turn to defend. But Teddy Akala just seemed like he had gotten in there. Uganda still doing the most and the Kenyans have lost the ball forward yet again. Once again, this is disappointing um, from Kenya. The Kenyan technical bench is up and arms. They feel that their charges should have scored. Um, seen that they can give out scrum penalties way too often. Brian Wahinya, that ball goes back. Eric Muller is running around looking for a chance. And the referee is saying the Ugandans are losing their heads. The ball has been knocked on. It looked like it went back. It definitely looked like it went back 100%. But this time, Johnny Kubu will do an Ivan Magomu. It is right under the poles. And this is a chance for the Kenyans to get back into the lead. Uh, yeah, Mula was unlucky with that. He went for the intercept. He thought he had both hands on the ball. And initially, the referee had signaled that the ball went backwards, but I believe a call from the AR um, had him reversing the call to a penalty for an intentional knock-on. And this is not a kick that Johnny Kubu will miss. You sure about that? <laughs> well, Helen says it's a kick that John Kubu will definitely not miss. Between you and me, let's see how true that is. Flags are up, like a John shared position. They've moved into different parts of the pitch. They've defended, they've attacked each other. And now Ivan Magomu has backed in Jacob Ochen. Conrad Wanyama recycles it into Magomu with a searching kick. But John Kubu is quick on it, calls for Mark. And you wonder, will he be going scrum down like, like uh, Willems of South Africa? 
we will see what Kubo's decision is going to be. But Ivan Magomo was trying to search for something there, trying to release Joseph Foyet. But Kubu intercepts that play, and now we will have to restart off his boot. Yeah, actually, Joseph Foyet had called for a kick from Ivan Magomu, but um, the kick wasn't good enough. And, uh, and so Kubu was able to call the mark, and he did not pull a VLMC. Oh, Wanyama, wonderful footwork. He floors Peter Waitere there. <laughs> he didn't need too much space. Just operated in a small, small gap there, and Peter Waiteri was on the ground. Now, Johnny Kubu calls for Mark again. You can call him John Mark Kubu at this rate. Two calls for Mark back to back. Probably the next time the ball is in air again, his fist will be up. But the good thing is, technically speaking, that is an advantage for Kenya because the Ugandans were already on him. You felt that they could have turned him over if he hadn't called for that mark, and he's a very intelligent lad, John Kubu. He's not the kind of player to make clumsy decisions and every single time it seems to pay off. And now he will be taking the Kenyans out of some territorial uh, disadvantage earlier accrued. Yeah, Uganda needs to find space instead of kicking directly to John Ekubu because he's very solid under that ball and rarely, rarely will make the mistake of dropping it or letting that ball bounce. Masod Uhuru is masod by Bryson Adaka and now Magomu. He has found the Kenyans asleep. He looks for Jacob Ochen. Kubu is on it. Ochen versus Kubu. And Kubu gets to it first, but he slips into touch. It was very interesting play because Jacob Ochen had put on the footrest there and it seemed like he had Johnny Kubu on. He had Johnny Yeah, a very, very smart kick by Ivan Magomu. Um, he turned Johnny Kubu around and with Jacob Ochen putting the pedal on that gas. Kubu had no option but to run out with the ball. Frank Chidega, for whom it has been a long time coming. And now that ball is brought in by the Kenyans. John Yambua has to pick that one up from his knees like a good Muganda. Yeah, we shall assimilate him by the end of the game, I believe. <laughs> Johnny Kubu now sends a searching kick. But Timothy Chisiga is on to it again. And yes, Brian Wahinya for company beats him. Beats Jason Misoga. Finds the gap. And it is Peter Waitere who tackles him. But Joseph Foyet is in Akazo's press. And it will be try time, Uganda. Kings Park Arena is on its feet. Joseph Foyet is the player who collects the pass from Ivan Magomu. Deliciously put over the shoulder of the defending Peter Waiteri. It was a them, But that try would have made the Fijians very proud. Excellent play from Timothy Chitsiga. Deceptively strong. He's a very small man, but he found a way to break Ken Kenyan tackles. Then was able to offload the ball to Ivan Magomu. Usama also broke the line and offloaded to Joseph Oyet, who literally scampered over the line. He's not the fastest of players. And he's, he's playing on the wing for Uganda. And he has scored his first international try for Uganda today. Here goes Liam Walker with a conversion far wide of mark. But now it is a four-pointer. But wonderful, wonderful transition of play by the Ugandans there. Timothy Chisiga collects John Kubu. That ball swings towards Uganda. And the Kenyans still manage to collect it. And what a running mall that is. Ball is finally brought down. These are not very good days. These are dangerous moments. And you hope your defenders can be very keen. But the Kenyans also hope they are at goal shy. And here they keep coming. Ball is into Bryson Adaka. Brian Wahinya. Brian Wahinya, what? An offload into Joel Nzuga. What does the referee say about this one? Inzuga flies over for the touchdown. But there will be some consultation between the center referee and the touchline judge. Does his foot go into touch? We are waiting to see this decision. But my word, what an offload from Brian Wahinya. And the referee says, try time, Wakenya. And the lead is surrendered yet again. Joel Nzuga puts the Ugandans to the sword. I'm over in the, in the right-hand corner. So Kenya once again take the lead. And Uganda will be looking to get back into this game. But at the moment, Kenya is in ascendancy. And they've been 
able to pinch a try right under the Uganda noses. And they have Johnny Ekubu looking to add the, the extras. We haven't had a moment of dullness in this fixture. It's been action after action. And now it's Johnny Kubu trying to find the extras. But as we speak, it is a two-point game. 20 for Kenya, 18 for Uganda. Uh, Very good high kick. Collected well by the Kenyans, combining the there points. to lift and keep the possession. Uganda now will be feeling the pressure because... Everything seemed to be working for them, but it is that man, Timothy Chisiga. Can he punish them yet again? He attempts to and goes for the hit against Paul Mutsami, who condenses it. And the penalty goes the way of Kenya yet again. Chisiga loses that ball for holding it on. The Kenyans don't allow him to play it. And now it will be an interesting decision for the men in red. They say they are going for the points. Yeah, Kenya wants to get this game right out of Uganda's hands. That was a mistake by Tim Timothy Kisiga. He was range. There's no strong wind at the moment, so it should be a relatively straightforward kick. Kubu does not cover the Ugandans this time. He does not beat them. But Joel Nzuga is already up and running with Timothy Chisiga only having cleared that ball away to reduce the danger. George Nyambua, dummy run into Jacob Ochen. It is a matter of fists and strength here and he loses that ball forward, George Nyambua, much to the chagrin of his coaches. And the Ugandan number 14. Very good guy, a flanker, a winger, a center. He came onto this team as a backliner, yet is naturally a flanker. We hope to see what he will offer the team in this position where he's been put on makeshifts. Now Liam Walker into Michael Wokorach, into Ivan Magomu, past them to Timothy Chisiga, who slices the gap. And Dan Anguich does very well to do the defense, and that looks like a penalty for the Ugandans. A high tackle by Daniel Anguich on Timothy Chisiga, and this is decision time this is very big decision time for the ugandans because the penalty is within convertible territory and, and yet history hasn't favored them with the past few kicks selling what is your call as my dear successful commentator <laughs> uh, yeah uganda has opted to go for posts and it is uh, liam walker who's been given the huge responsibility he was good for buffalo's um during the league and um, he wasn't missing many of the tee but uh, this is an international game and with time running out this could be uganda's last chance to win the game kenya has done brilliantly to start the game off in the lead they lost the lead then they got back into the game and right now they're leading by two points some of the ugandan players cannot bear to watch and have turned away this is malaria time for everybody in the stands, those who are watching on the live feeds on Rugby Pass and on YouTube. Liam Walker for the win! He does it! And the referee says that is full time! And Liam Walker has done it for Uganda, ladies and gentlemen! Full time at Kings Park Arena! And for the first time in four years, history will be in Uganda's favor! Ladies and gentlemen, the Ugandans have finally done it to defeat their cross the neighbors, their cross border neighbors, the Kenyans. And the final score is 21 for Uganda and 20 for the Kenyans. Another one point win in international rugby on the calendar. Yeah, and um, the 2023 Victoria Cup title goes to Uganda. For the first time ever, Uganda wins the Victoria Cup after taking part in the competition for, for four years. 2010, Kenya were unsuccessful, but there's still the return leg in Kisumu. And at all roads lead to Kisumu next Saturday. From wherever you are, always remember, we may do whatever we want, we may be different, we may come from different countries, but rugby is a sport that brings us together, and at the end of the day, may rugby always win.